Good afternoon, everyone. Largest dust storm in five years descended on Taiwan just a couple of days ago. This is my own personal video and account of what the skies look like as the dust storm was starting to roll in over Taipei. In Beijing, unbelievable smog. What was left on the cars here was this type of dust after a couple of days. Red skies. And I know those of you who are sky watchers can appreciate the length of the contrails because it was non-stop. For almost two days after this front was rolling through, you see one jet aircraft going through, leaving what I remember as a child as an airplane passing overhead. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a barrage of contrails during the sunset. Again, I think it was to try to get this weather front to move through more quickly. The amount of asthma was unbelievable during the storm. And do you think this could all be due to the shift in the monsoon that's going to be soon causing a famine in China? Or do you think it would be all the smoke tracks from the vessels transiting around Asia? Not talked about that too much. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. So I wanted to walk you through the last several days here in Taiwan and around Asia. Thunderstorms outside if you hear the crackling in the back. Largest dust storm in five years descending on Taiwan. April 5th, 6th, 7th, and then the 8th still had hazy skies just until a couple of days ago. Massive influx of asthma, flu, allergy symptoms into the ERs overwhelmed here in the island. And as you can see the dust cloud in the radar loop coming in, I decided to shoot this video right at sunset. You can really start to see the dust coming in the air in different layers. And the sun itself had this more electric quality and electric look to it, but you can definitely see that dust coming in the atmosphere. It was like this for a couple days in a row. And taking some still shots as well, you start to see these patterns inside, really discernible, very easy to notice. Everybody in town was talking about it too, saying, wow, did you see the sky, the fingers in the sky, the, the shapes in the sky? But I wonder what it was really like in Beijing because they had the highest hazardous level that you can possibly get. Not only was there a smoky cocktail like we're used to with the Beijing pollution, but they also had this sandstorm at the same time engulfing the place. If you hadn't heard about the sandstorm, it originated in Gansu province, which is way out west, a border on the Himalayan range and out into the Tarim Basin in the Xinjiang Desert area, Gansu. Drought there anyway right now. They're losing more water. They are out of water out in that area. Extremely dry. But then you can take a look here in Beijing. This is back on March 28th. So you have to realize the progression of the storm going all the way from western China over to Beijing and then a few days after just encroaching eastward, finally coming over Japan and Taiwan out into the sea. But this is how much dust it left on the cars. Black cars are quite easy to see. This is an average sampling of dust, I guess you could say, that had come down. Now during this time as well, the sunsets were incredibly red. It was almost like there was a volcanic eruption. So I decided to roll some video off my balcony here with a telephoto lens overlooking the mountain as the sun set into the trees. But it was this amazing color for a couple of days. It never got much darker orange than this. But this is about the apex of it here. So I'll leave you with a still so you can really see about how that sunshine was coming through. Now at the same time, the geoengineering was off the hook. It was non-stop for two straight days. And all these skylines of white. So I thought, let's just do this at sunset and see what comes out. Because the persistent contrails, stratospheric, aerosol, geoengineering, you can see it more clearly. The halo shapes, the just randomness in the sky at sunset. Again, this is the view from my balcony overlooking one of the mountains. That's a water tower on the building over to the left. But as they were trying to push this front out, this is the very last day and a half. The emergency rooms were full of people with asthma, so I think they were trying to push the front as quickly as they could because, again, people were noticing this. It was at such a heavy level. It was nonstop for at least 36 hours. You could see it in the moonlight as well. 
people noticed across the city that this was in their skies. So I actually had a, a couple conversations with people about geoengineering in the grand solar minimum, explaining you know, cosmic radiation management. And here you go, a, a regular con trail from an aircraft like I saw when I was a kid. You know, those trails would dissipate after seconds. And then you have all these longer, persistent contrails. And you know that's a different mix chemically or in the fuel supply or whatever. But on the right, here comes one through the screen. And just luckily, while I was capturing this, I was able to get something that I think you can appreciate. And you can really see how it starts to taper off there with those horsetails. Check out that second aircraft at the same exact height, leaving no persistent contrail. And then here comes another one creating an X pattern. And it just kept going on and on and on. So I don't know if the asthma was caused more by the dust or all by the spraying that was going on. But here we are into China coming into a massive drought in the Grand Solar Minimum. They're going to go into a famine if they cannot get their food production online again. Heilongjiang. In the northern areas where they grow wheat and corn, the central areas being flooded out, the northern areas are having a drought. So what I did here is this is the correlation between sunspot numbers and the amount of precipitation in the monsoon coming down. Clearly discernible that there's a difference. This is in the 11 year solar cycle from solar max to solar min and then back up again in the 22 year round trip on that. But what happens when we come to a 400 year lull in sunspot activity? You can imagine tremendous effects on the monsoon and this is going to be globally as well. China is not just a single instance. This is the focus of study. But our jet streams and our moisture patterns, monsoon patterns, cloud patterns, wind patterns, it's all changing across the planet. And it's not CO2, it's the sun. And another thing I want to bring you to here, this is a map of the ship routes and the density of shipping across Asia. So you know how much smoke that generally container ships and fishing vessels put out. You have to ask yourself how much of this is coming up too as well with the pollution. Nice thunderclap in the back. I'm going to turn off my computer here. I'm going to wrap up with you. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it.